The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're going to be using some outboard synths in conjunction with Ableton Live 10. The example that I have here is made up entirely of software instruments. A grand piano from Ableton, a pluck synth that I made in Serum, and a bass line that I also made in Serum. And we're gonna swap these out for some outboard gear. And then all the drums I put together using some one shots and loops from the whole loop sample packs. So we're just gonna go top to bottom here with these synths and kind of just redo them with something a little bit better. So first is gonna be super easy. We're gonna swap this piano out for one from inside my Roland Phantom G6. I find the pianos from the keyboard to sound a lot more musical, realistic, wide, just about any good adjective you could uh, use to describe music. It's gonna come out of the Roland keyboard. So let's set this up. Now this is the easiest thing in the world. All you gotta do is duplicate your piano channel and drop an external instrument onto there. And we're not gonna need the sidechain compressor anymore. And in this drop down menu is every synth that you have plugged in via USB. Now I have a Roland Juno 106 that came out in the 80s before USB was even a thing. So I'm using the Motu Fastlane USB converter, which basically lets you plug in two retro synths and use them at the same time, but independently with your computer. Um, but we're doing the piano, so I'm gonna pull up the Phantom and let's give this a listen. Turn off the old one. Let's solo it. Let's go back. Yeah, big difference. And I know I like the new one better, in fact, I don't think I want to do anything to this sound other than just record it. So I'm going to make a new audio channel and pull up my Phantom. Ableton 10 lets you name the inputs. Super useful when you have an interface with more than a pair of inputs because you start forgetting what's plugged into what. So let's grab our Phantom, leave a little bit of empty space in the beginning, and we're just going to record our piano stem. <laughs> Cool, so now we've got our new piano. I have my buffer size in Ableton at 256, and once you start going up with the buffer, you start having to slide all your recordings over just a little bit. Not sure why it does that, but has something to do with the MIDI and the latency going in and out, so just remember to do that when you're recording your outboard synths and you'll be good to go. And now you can get rid of this duplicate channel, and this is the old one. We could do one more A-B test just for funsies. Let's get them the same volume. Let's go to the top one. A lot warmer. This is kind of small and digital and in the center and kind of sounds like a karaoke piano compared to the compared to the Phantom. Let's keep going down our track. Maybe we can uh, get rid of that. Let's listen to this next part. Now I made this sound in Serum specifically to sound like a Juno 106 because it's a sound I use a lot. You can make it pretty easily from the initial patch just by applying these settings. I don't even really need a full tutorial for that sound because we're about to swap it out anyways. So let's hit Command D to duplicate it, drop our external instrument on, and fast lane A is what I got my Juno plugged into and let's give our new sound a listen. Mmm. Warm and delightful. We're gonna do the same thing, but select the Juno this time. If you have an interface like my Apollo 8 
that has multiple inputs, you can actually track all these in at the same time. And uh, like, for example, we could do the Moog, because I know that's what I'm doing next. I already got my sound loaded up. Let's uh, just so you guys don't have to watch me do this three times in a row, just do both of these at the same time. I've got a Moog bass line coming in down here. The Juno 106 playing the plucks. Let's do it. Do your 808 sound like they belong in a recycling bin? Are your trap productions lacking that fresh organic hot sauce? Here at Whole Loops, we've got the product for you. Introducing Urban Beats 3, the latest addition to our best-selling bundle of trap snares, poppin', percussions, and the most disrespectful 808s we've ever harvested. Urban Beats 3 is available now only at wholeloops.com. This is the beauty of having multiple inputs. And I know that's a loop right there, so we don't even have to record the second take of it. Maybe just slide the uh, this over a couple bits. Slide this over a couple bits. So we just did two at the same time. How about that? Let's mute our old ones and see what we did. You can get rid of the duplicate and get rid of the duplicate. Mute the old channels. Let's turn our uh, Juno up a little bit. We can turn this one up a little bit as well too. You definitely gotta crank the gain on these analog synths. They come in a little quiet. But now that we have our sound locked in, we could pull up our sidechain compressor, put it back on our audio, put it back on our audio down here. Now let's just do a little quick A-B comparison and see what we started with. Let's go back to here. Computer can't handle all the analog heat going on today. Let me turn my buffer up even more. Can't stand that shit. It's not really a matter of picking the better one. Sometimes it's combining them both and using the best of both worlds. As you can see, it's sounding pretty good with all four at the same time, but it is as simple as that using outboard gear with Ableton. You could even control the Juno with your musical typing keyboard if you wanted to. And I do this all the time. And uh, like if you use Cthulhu a lot, this works just like using Cthulhu with Serum would work really just lets your hardware synth be a software synth. So you can play the Juno right now, just with the uh, typing on my keyboard. Super, super useful. I highly encourage you, if you uh, already have a piece of outboard gear, to just get the interface and plug it in and give it a shot because you will find some really, really cool and useful stuff. As you could hear, these outboard synths just took this song from sounding tacky to nice and emotional and full. It's funny, it's like Serum is all high and low, and then the Juno is all mids. But 
that's all I wanted to share with you guys. I know a lot of you were curious about how to even use these old synths with new software like Ableton. This is kind of a follow-up, the first follow-up of many to my studio tour video. I'm going to be diving into lots of ways to combine outboard gear into your Ableton work and really take the best of both worlds. So I hope this helped you find some new inspiration or try something that you've never tried before. I'll be seeing you guys in the comments below and I'll catch you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.